So if I were to tell you that the United States had a national voter ID law, would that surprise you? Well, today, we do a deep dive into voter ID laws. Hey, my name is Nate the Lawyer, and welcome to my channel where you are the jury of today's content. If you haven't already, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you like what you hear. Let's get into it. Now, today we're going to do a deep dive into voter ID laws. Now, this video will be factual, and I've provided all the sources to all the data, all the research, everything that I've done in the description. I'm talking about congressional record, I'm talking about multiple studies. For all that information, check out the links in the description. There's also going to be a poll in the community tab if you want to be a part of the action. So first, what are voter ID laws? Now, it's a simple question, but it's important so we are all on the same page. Now, simply put, voter ID laws are laws that jurisdictions put in place to identify eligible voters. Now, in the United States, generally, you have to be a citizen, 18 years or older, and reside in the voting jurisdiction. Now, all states have voter identification requirements. That just makes sense, right? And they range from simply announcing one's name to showing some type of photo ID. Now, the rules vary widely from state to state. Here are some examples. First, we'll start in Vermont, in which a voter just has to go to the polls, announce their name. If their name matches one of the names on the list, they're able to vote. If it doesn't, they can sign an affidavit and still cast a legal vote. Check it out. When you arrive, get in line for your district. Most of the time, the lines are short. But sometimes, like for a presidential election, the lines can be long. When you get to the table, say your name clearly. Tell the staff your last name or family name first. The election staff will make sure your name is on the list of registered voters. They will give you a paper ballot. This is in contrast to a place like Georgia, where they require photo identification before you cast a ballot in person. Check it out. You can also vote early in person from October 12th through 30th. The hours and locations vary by county, but all counties are required to allow you to vote early on at least one Saturday if voting on the weekend is easier for you. There's a link in the description where you can just select your county and it will tell you when and where you can go vote early. If you really want all the excitement of voting in person on November 3rd though, you can find out where to go to vote using the same link you use to register. Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. statewide. You'll need to bring an ID with you. They'll accept a driver's license, state ID, passport, military ID, or tribal ID. If you don't have any of those forms of identification, you can get a free voter ID card at your county registrar's office or the DMV. The now, I know there's a huge controversy over voter ID laws, and some states pass them and some states not. But the first fact that you need to know is that the United States, we have a national voter ID law. For instance, if you go to the Wikipedia page on voter identification laws in the United States, you can see here it clearly states at the federal level, the Help America Vote Act of 2020 requires a voter ID for all new voters in federal elections who registered by mail and who did not provide a driver's license number or the last four digits of the social security number that was matched to government records. Now, the Help America Vote Act of 2002 was signed into law by President George W. Bush. Now, to understand why the federal government passed this legislation, we need to go back to the 2000 election, Bush versus Gore. A big call to make. CNN announces that we call Florida in the Al Gore column. This is a state both campaigns desperately wanted to win. Stand by, stand by. Uh, CNN right now is moving our earlier declaration of Florida back to the too close to call column. CNN declares that George Walker Bush has won Florida's 25 electoral votes. Now, Bush won that election by 537 votes in the state of Florida. Now, that was out of almost 6 million votes cast, a razor-thin margin. But after that election, something drastic happened. See, Florida, like some other states, don't allow felons to vote in federal elections. So before the election, Florida removes felons off the voter rolls. But in 2000, Florida actually removed 12,000 people off the voter rolls who were not felons. This was an accident. And with a razor-thin margin of 537 votes, 12,000 unaccounted votes makes a big difference. So with the legitimacy of the presidency actually in jeopardy, Congress came together and passed the Help America Vote Act. That was passed in 2002, and this is what the bill was supposed to do. Under this law, people registering to vote are required to prove that they are who they say they are with appropriate identification. 
First-time voters who register by mail will be asked to provide identification when they cast their ballots. This law also creates new criminal penalties for providing false information and punishes yes. them. Now it's my honor to sign into law the Help America Vote Act of 2002. So essentially, the Help America Vote Act forced first-time voters in federal elections to be identified. Now, that was either by presenting ID during registration or presenting some form of ID when you showed up at the polls for the first time to vote. Now, that ID could be either current valid photo identification, it actually says that, or a copy of a utility bill, bank statement, government check, paycheck, or other government document that shows your name and address. So just to be clear, the United States has a national voter ID law, and that law has been in effect since 2002. So the question is, has it always been this political? Have the Democrats always fought against voter ID laws? Have the Republicans always wanted voter ID laws for suppression of democratic votes? So let's look at the legislative history. Now, the Help America Vote Act passed the House of Representatives by a vote of 357 to 48. As a matter of fact, there were only 11 Democrats that voted against this bill. More Republicans voted against the Help America Vote Act than Democrats. In the U.S. Senate, the majority was even more overwhelming, as 92 senators voted for this, but only two senators voted against it. And as you can see from the congressional record, more Democrats in the Senate voted for this bill than Republicans. The two people who voted against it were also Democrats. Now, the two senators who voted against the Help America Vote Act are Chuck Schumer and Hillary Clinton, and they're both from the state of New York, where both the ACLU and the New York Times have called voter suppression land. This is a quote from the New York Times. Despite its reputation for sterling progressivism, New York has some of the most restrictive election laws in the nation. It is one of just 12 states without early voting. No other state holds its federal and state primary elections on different days. Voters who want to change their party affiliation must do so more than a year before the election, a rule that famously left Ivanka Trump unable to vote for her father in the 2016 Republican primary. New Yorkers would be aghast if anyone choose New York of voter suppression said Donna Lieberman, executive director of the New York Civil Liberties Union. But she said, the antiquated nature of our laws and the failure to enact any common sense reform for years puts us kind of in voter suppression land. Yes, both the ACLU and the New York Times is saying New York State is voter suppression land. So New York State being one of the states that's hardest to vote in, I wanted to see why Hillary Clinton and Chuck Schumer voted against the Help America Vote Act. It was overwhelmingly popular. Remember, this law passed with veto-proof majorities. So I went to the congressional record of October 16, 2002. This is when the bill was actually voted on. Then Senator Hillary Clinton said about the Help America Vote Act. Unfortunately, the Help America Vote Act would reduce the rights of New Yorkers who are first-time voters in federal elections by requiring them to present a valid photo identification, utility bill, bank statement, or government identification that verifies the name and address of the voter. Senator Clinton goes on to say, this provision will repress voter participation among New Yorkers who are in fact eligible to vote. Moreover, it will disproportionately affect ethnic and racial minorities, recently naturalized American citizens, language minorities, the poor, the homeless, the millions of eligible New Yorkers who do not have a driver's license, and those individuals who otherwise would have exercised their right to vote without these new provisions. Remember, this was argued in 2002, and both Democrats and Republicans passed this national voter ID law Overwhelmingly. So the, the interesting part about this is that we now have 20 years of data after this voter ID law was passed. So we can look at to see if those ills had come true. All right, so let's recap. First, the United States has a national voter ID law, the Help America Vote Act, that was passed by Congress in 2002. The second thing you need to know is that more Republicans voted against the Help America Vote Act than Democrats. Third, of the Democrats who voted against the Help America Vote Act, Hillary Clinton predicted that the Help America Vote Act would lower, would lower voter participation in minority groups because they couldn't get an ID. That was the prediction. Now, we have 20 years of data after she made this prediction in 2002. So now, after the national voter ID law was passed, and it was supposed to affect black and Latino voters or racial minorities, disproportionately lowering their voter turnout, what has happened? Well, we've had historic, and again, I want to make it very clear, historic turnout. 
within both the African-American community and the minority community in general. Here are some of the headlines. 2012 election was a historic first for black voters. 2012 voter black voter turnout surpassed white turnout, the first time in history. Black Georgia voters, high turnout helped solidify a historic win, organizers say. Despite voter ID law, minority turnout up in Georgia. So those are the headlines, but what does the data say? What does the data say? Most of the growth in the electorate since 2000 has come from Hispanic, Black, and Asian eligible voters. As you can see, 76% of the total increase is in minority groups. Seems like the voter ID laws aren't suppressing the minority vote. So this is just a cursory look at both headlines and some charts provided by both Pew Research Center and the Census Bureau. But what do the researchers say, right? Do the researchers conclude definitively that voter ID laws suppress the turnout in minority communities? So I'm not going to keep you in suspense. Each study from both conservative sources and liberal sources say the same thing. One, the data shows that voter ID laws have a minimal to no effect on voter turnout. So here's a quote from MIT Election Data and Science Lab. While it may seem obvious that voter ID laws serve to depress turnout, even if descriptively and not casually, scholars have made important arguments that the very presence of voter ID laws can have a counter-mobilizing effect that encourages greater turnout among voting populations that are targeted by those laws. This is what recently happened in Georgia. So here's what Left Leaning 538 says. So when we evaluate research on voter ID laws, it is critical to assess the strength of the underlying research design. Summarizing a wide range of studies in a 2017 review, Benjamin Highton concluded that a small number of studies have employed suitable research designs and generally find modest, if any, turnout effects of voter identification laws. Some of the newest evidence reinforces that conclusion and uses high-quality administrative data that can address at least some of the problems that have bedeviled prior studies. Here is what the right-leaning Cato Institute says. In short, the evidence presented here indicates that even if the worst fears of critics and proponents are true, that all those who would have voted without IDs are fraudulent or that all would be disenfranchised, it would have at most a tiny effect on election turnout and outcome. And this is the right-leaning Cato Institute. So just so we're clear, all the data, all the evidence shows that voter ID laws don't change outcomes of elections. It actually doesn't have any real effect on voter turnout. Matter of fact, some scholars would argue that it has the opposite effect of increasing voter turnout in minority communities. And after the national voter ID law was passed in 2002, we've had historic minority turnout and participation in the election. According to a Census Bureau report released this week, African Americans voted at a higher rate than any other ethnic group in the, in the 2012 presidential election. Here to talk about what drove that historic turnout and how to leverage our political power. So it seems like anyone who believes that voter ID laws actually suppress minority votes hasn't seen the data. So with that, we have to talk about the intent of voter ID laws in some states. Now, Republicans have been making their intent on why they're passing these laws clear. Listen to this. The law is going to kick the Democrats in the butt. If it hurts yeah. a bunch of lazy blacks that wants their, the government to give them everything, so be it. And it just so happens that a lot of those people vote Democrat. Gee. It's something we're working on all over the country because in the states where they do have uh, voter ID laws, you've seen um, uh, actually elections begin to change uh, towards more conservative candidates. Voter ID, which is going to allow Governor Romney to win the state of Pennsylvania, done. A lot of us are campaign officials or campaign professionals, and we want to do everything we can to uh, help her. Sometimes we think that's voter ID, sometimes we think that's longer lines, whatever it may be. Do you think all the attention drawn to voter ID affected last year's elections? Uh, yeah, I think a little bit. I think we probably had a better election. Think about this. Uh, we cut Obama by 5%, uh, which was big. You know, a lot of people lost sight of that. He, he won. He beat McCain by 10%. He only beat uh, Romney by 5%. I think that probably photo ID had a, a helped a bit in that. You know that a lot of Republicans since 1984 in the presidential races have not been able to win in Wisconsin. Why would it be any different for Ted Cruz or a Donald Trump? Well, I think Hillary Clinton is about the weakest candidate the Democrats have ever put up. And now we have photo ID. And I think photo ID is going to make a little bit of a difference as well. So let's not kid ourselves. In 2002, the intent wasn't to suppress votes. 
It was to secure the voting system. And now it seems like Republicans, as they're clearly saying here, they intend to suppress Democratic votes. May they be black votes, minority votes, whatever. And since most minorities vote Democrat, they hope voter ID laws will help that effect, will make it harder for minorities to vote. But think about this. Both sides are wrong with the conclusion because, as you can see from all the data, voter ID laws don't do any of that. Do you think voter ID laws are inherently racist? If they are, then it seems like the whole Democratic Party was racist in 2002 when they voted in the national voter ID law. Is the intent of the Republicans now to suppress Democratic votes, does that matter? And what about the outcomes, right? Because now, because we have all this data, because we have these studies, now we know that voter ID laws don't really affect voter turnout, don't really suppress minority votes. And it doesn't change the outcome of elections. That's at least what the data shows. So at the end of the day, where do you come out on voter ID laws? Now, I usually don't give my opinion, but this time I will. I think voter ID laws are good in some instances and bad in some others. If your intent to pass a voter ID law is to suppress minority votes, that's a bad thing. But on the other side, calling voter ID laws inherently racist is also a bad thing. And the narrative that voter ID laws are the only forms of voter suppression is preposterous. For instance, it's so much harder to vote in a state like New York than it is a state like Georgia, which has a voter ID law. For instance, check this out. So let's compare Georgia, which has a strict voter ID law, with New York State, which doesn't have any requirements for voter ID at the polls. Let's see which state is easier to vote in. Which state has early voting? Well, both Georgia and New York State have early voting. Universal absentee ballots, meaning that anyone can send in an absentee ballot without an excuse. Well, Georgia has that, but New York State does not. What about ballot drop boxes? Well, New York doesn't have ballot drop boxes, but Georgia does. Universal vote by mail? Georgia has it. New York State doesn't. Joint primaries, meaning that both local and federal elections are held at the same time so people don't have to make two trips to the polls. In Georgia, they do have joint primaries. In New York, they do not. Same-day registration. Neither state has same-day registration. But what about automatic voter registration? Well, Georgia's had it for a while, but New York just instituted it as of 2020. And required photo ID? New York does not, while Georgia does. Now, even when it comes to early voting, look at this difference. See, Georgia allows early voting up to 17 days before the election and requires some weekends, when New York only has nine. And when it comes to banning handouts to people online, both Georgia and New York ban certain handouts to voters. So it's easier to vote in the state of Georgia than it is to vote in the state of New York, even with Georgia's photo ID requirement. And don't forget, that's why the New York Times and the ACLU called it voter suppression land. But they don't call New York voter suppression land anymore because obviously the politics don't allow it. So at the end of the day, it's actually harder for you to cast your vote in the state of New York than it is in the state of Georgia, the place that's supposed to be suppressing the minority vote. Now, if that surprised you, yeah, it surprises a lot of people. Well, if you made it to this part of the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you learned something in this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. My name is Nate the Lawyer, and I'm going to see you in the next one.